applying storage structures. All I really want to do in this movie is essentially reiterate the application type for the different storage structures in an Oracle database. Indexes and B-tree indexes are most commonly applied to all types of databases, but are generally largely essential for all the indexes in an OLTP database because they are not prone to much overflow as a result of DML changes to tables. A bitmap. Most likely in data warehouses, I have heard some both good and bad reports about bitmaps even in data warehouses. It's possible that perhaps the bitmaps have been misused. I wouldn't recommend using bitmaps in an OLTP database unless you can actually rebuild the bitmap indexes on occasion. As I already stated in the previous movie, a bitmap is subject to a lot more overflow than a B-tree index is simply because of its external structure and the way in which it's built. A bitmap index cannot be changed like a B-tree index where the B-tree index is automatically restructured when, for instance, a new row is inserted. The only issue with a B-tree index is that space is not recovered when rows are deleted. So reading through a full scan on a B-tree index can actually give you a problem if a lot of rows have been deleted because it could be reading a lot of empty space. Bitmap indexes generally overflow automatically as soon as you change things and extensive updates can actually cause some major performance problems down the road. They're best used in data warehouses or they're best used in OLTP databases in situations where firstly they can be regularly updated. In other words, you can't use them in a 24 hour available database or secondly, where they're absolutely critical for speed, but they must be updated. So your database will have to go offline for certain periods, say once a week, once a month, every 24 hours, in order to rebuild bitmap indexes. If you can rebuild bitmap indexes, you actually can get a highly efficient index structure in your database. Index organized tables, I would personally only use them in data warehouses, but they have been used successfully in both OLTP and data warehouse structures. Point to make is that an IoT structures all data in a table or columns in the sequence of the index. If the table is always accessed in that index order, then you'll get very fast access. If you don't access that table in that index order, you're going to have a lot of full table scans and a lot of performance problems. Partitions. Both local and global indexes can be used in both OLTP and data warehouse databases, depending on the application and what you're actually doing with it. Clusters, I would recommend only using those in data warehouses. They're essentially read-only objects and subject to some serious overflow activity. Overflow activity implies that if you try to add a record or a new row to a cluster, it doesn't go and slot the row into the correct position based on the pre-constructed order or sorted order of the cluster. It overflows and puts it somewhere else on the disk, miles away from where the original cluster is or miles away from the structure of the cluster. What happens when objects such as bitmap indexes, IOTs and clusters overflow is you get the effect that reading even a single row from one of these objects can actually cause the IO activity to bounce all over the disk. If the optimizer is intelligent enough, it actually concludes that the cluster should be full scanned so it reads the whole cluster. If you're trying to find a single row, millions of rows, you're wasting a lot of time and you've got a serious performance problem. Materialized views, same as clusters, they're read-only objects, you can't change things, they can be refreshed on occasion, that doesn't imply that you can actually change rows through materialized views into tables easily and allow the base tables to actually be updated rapidly. If those base tables are accessed by a lot of DML activity and an OLTP database, and the materialized views are used for a data warehouse for reading reports, large chunks of data, you're going to get conflict if you use the base tables for both the data warehouse and OLTP activity. That's what a materialized view is for. It pre-constructs, allowing fast access to pre-constructed data, effectively a copy of underlying data. Partitions, you can use them in both types of databases, in both extremes, depending on the application. Typically, partitions are used for very large tables. In an OLTP database, you take advantage of partitions for the purposes of partition pruning. Partition pruning is where a SQL statement reads a small portion of a table based on the fact that all the rows it needs are in, say, for instance, a single partition. In a data warehouse where you would typically run reports, say, for quarters, you could have partitions split up by quarters, 
or additionally you could read multiple partitions to create large reports and execute the I.O. on those multiple partitions in parallel on multiple CPU platforms. That's the basis of the application of Oracle Specialized Storage Structures.